Praise the Lord, church. Let's all stand together. We have a brief announcement. This coming Saturday, we have our prayer at 9 a.m. It's been a great time of prayer. If you haven't been out yet, go ahead and make it out if you can. And then right after that at 10 o'clock, uh, the webs uh, have been spearheading this Thanksgiving project, and we need some help. If you can stay after prayer and come at 10 o'clock, we're going to pack up those Thanksgiving boxes and be delivering to delivering those meals to the families uh, that have been designated for that project. So thanks for everybody who donated to that. And now we just need a few more hands to help us with the labor and delivering those. If you can be here this Saturday and at 10 o'clock and help with that, can you raise your hand real quick? We just get a few people that can help with that. One, two, three, help more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. And, and you'll be blessed by that as well. I am just grateful to be in church tonight. We have a wonderful church, and it's been on my mind. I don't want to go through the whole Bible story, but it, the, the, the concept of the cities of refuge in the Old Testament has just been on my mind today. This idea that God told his people, I want you to designate six cities in your land, that if someone is running away from a person who wants revenge on them, that they could find their Play, they could find their way to one of these cities of safety and sanctuary and refuge. And as long as they got there and they stayed there, that person seeking revenge couldn't touch them. And I just feel like when I come to church on a Wednesday night, it's like I just made it to that city of refuge. I just feel like it's the whole world's been chasing me down. You've got stuff that's been stressing you out and you know that that bill's coming due and you've got an argument to deal with tomorrow and, and a manager to report to tomorrow, but somehow you just found your way to the city of refuge. And I just feel like that's what this place is. It, it's a sanctuary and it's a refuge. It's a safe place. You know, there are places that are designated that Jared's not allowed to hunt. It's a sanctuary, right? And if the animal can just get there, He's safe from the archer. He's safe from the hunter. And you've made it tonight. Can we just lift up our hands and be thankful to him right now? Mighty God, I'm so thankful that I made it. That's right, lift up your voices just for a moment. God, I'm so thankful that you've established an ark of safety, that you've set up a place called the church. And it's not just a place in geography. It's not just a location on a map. It's not even just a building, but it's the place where your presence is. It's the place where your people are. It's the place where we gather together and we can meet with each other. People who have the like spirit, Lord. People who are ready to worship you. People who want to be in, in your presence and feel your nearness and feel your closeness. And there's something that happens to my spirit that changes and I feel comforted when I've been stressed and I've 
feel strengthened when I have been weakened. And I feel healed when I have been broken. It's in this house. And can we do that right now one more time? Lift up your voices and lift up your hands and clap your hands and lift up some worship and praise and say, God, I'm thankful for a place of refuge in this house tonight. Let's worship with our worship team tonight. Yeah. 
Oh, don't stop. Don't stop. Why don't we just worship the Lord right now? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your goodness today. Thank you for your greatness, oh Lord God, in our lives and how you have taken us to the places where we need to be. Thank you so much for your presence today. Oh my. Oh my. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Isn't he good today? Was he good yesterday? He'll be good tomorrow. Oh, he's always been good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I want to just share with you some things. I'm going to be speaking on a couple things that may get a little uncomfortable for you. I've already, as Brother Friend, told him what I'd like to do uh, a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm a firm believer that if the shoe fits, you buy two, right? That's how I do it. Uh, I, I buy both of them, not just one, uh, unless I was missing a foot. But, and I'm a firm believer that everybody here today has struggled some time in your life. Every one of us, every one of us, you can all raise your hand because nobody's going to be left out. Okay. We've all experienced pain. We've all struggled, but we've also, if you know, Jesus Christ, you've also know that he's the soft landing in your life, that he catches you when you're down going down. And he holds you close. Even in the scriptures, Song of Solomon says this, his, his right hand does embrace me and his left hand does lift up my head. How many times has been in your lifetime to where in the darkness of your life, you just needed him to hug you? And he has. You know why? Because God is love. And if you realize how much he really loves you, you will never be the same. So tonight I'm going to talk a few things about what has happened and how to be successful in walking with the Lord. I may touch on the subject of suicide because who hasn't at one time, perhaps there's somebody in this building that has been contemplating the taking of their life because they're tired of life. You didn't know what to do and how to turn, and where to go. And so you tried this person, you tried the pastor, you tried sister pastor, and you tried a friend over here and they just didn't have the answer for you. And you just kind of wept in the darkness of your night. But tonight I want to talk to you about the faithfulness of God and how much he cares for you. So if I tear up, that's okay. You don't have to worry about me, okay? I got my little, somewhere along the way, my wipes. I'm going to be who I am, and nobody's going to change that except him. Why don't we just raise our hands to him again and say, Lord Jesus, I love you more than anything else. I love you more than yesterday, Lord but I want to love you more tomorrow than I do today. I want to draw near to you like no other because you will draw near to me because I seek your face. And I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your love. I thank you for the pain. I thank you for the struggles.
I thank you for the trials. I thank you for the health issues. I thank you for everything in my life that you have brought me to this place. And I thank you for that, Lord God, no matter what. In the name of Jesus, your name, Lord. You may be seated. There's a song that says, there's only love in the heart of God. Uh, I never used to preach with notes, but if you know me by now, that there was a time in my life that I could not talk, and now I can't shut up. So, I have notes to kind of guide me along the way. So if you don't mind, these notes are from my heart. The song that says, there's only love in the heart of God. There's no room for shame in his open arms. You know, shame didn't come before, before the fall. It came after the fall. Shame is not of God. So just to let you know that, okay? I know you're hurting, and I can see it in your eyes. How many times have you looked at someone and you knew that there was pain and you knew they were struggling. I had two men today just pull me off to the side and they just begin to talk to me about, about uh, things and I could see their eyes tearing up. These are men just tearing up and sharing with me their life story and where they need to be. They may be coming soon. I'm praying that they will. So pull back the curtain and take off the disguise. How many times have we tried to hide behind a disguise with God? We try to say, I'm okay, and really inside you're really not, and you're not doing anything to clean it up. So tonight, I do not have a title, but I have a sentence, a word. And I would like you to put it up if you would. There's more to life than what you know. There's more to life than what you know. God wants no one to be lost, but whosoever will, let him come. What we will discuss tonight has brought many to the place of where they are at today. Many thanks goes out to all, the you, all of you, young and old, who have inspired me, helped me, supported me, and even corrected me. I am thankful for all that God has brought us through in this life. I am thankful to come alongside you as we battle together and fight against spiritual wickedness and against powers in high places and dark places. I want to thank you all for lifting each other's hands when they couldn't lift them up themselves. Every prayer that we have prayed in desperation, every song of faith we have sang through doubt and fear, in the end, we'll see that it was worth it all when he returns to wipe away all of our tears. You do know that every tear you weep, he's bottling it up right now. You do know that, don't you? So let us not live from service to service as many do, but let us live for him victoriously in between that service to service. So I would like you to learn to do something if you would. I tried to teach my children this as they were growing up. And it's because of what has happened in my life that I want them to do and more. Enjoy the journey that God will place you on as you seek his face. Learn to do well as found in the scriptures in the book of Isaiah. And remember whose kid you are. You are not alone. You never have been. He is your father and he will seek the betterment of your life no matter what, because there's no more to life than what you know. Those are not my words. 
Those are not your words. Those didn't come just from somebody else. I'm going to share that with you in just a moment. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, we read, But as it is written, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. God has plans to reveal himself to you in truth, but the understanding of that truth is given only to those who love God, who are grateful to who he is and all that he has done for them. And these individuals look for the hidden treasure of his word. Therefore, a continuous attaining of knowledge and understanding is possible to those who willingly yield to his guidance in their lives. As the song says, take me there. I long for him as in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. My soul longs for him and I pray that one day, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, that your soul will long for him also. It could be that the very first time you experience God's presence, you may not have recognized him. Perhaps it was a sense of peace or you knew something felt different but couldn't explain it. Perhaps it was the pit that you couldn't get out of and he reached and pulled you out and you had no understanding how that happened. Maybe it was a dream or even words that were spoken. I want to clarify something tonight to you that there is no talent in me except one. God gave me one talent and I want to be able, when I see him, I want to give him 10. So everything we do, we do unto the Lord and we give everything of ourselves like no other. It isn't just a church to church service. It's a walk that you walk with him, that you get to know him because he wants to be known of you. Why then did he come to me? You may ask that question. I don't have anything to give. I don't have a talent. All I have is a mess at times because of his love. There are many times I can look back and if you heard this story before, forgive me, but there may be people here that need to hear this that needs their lives to be taken a look at. There are many times that I can look back and see God's hand, though at the time I did not recognize him. And one of those times was the age of 13. I was dragged into a house chapel across the street from Everett Junior High. A man told us to kneel in a circle and he prayed. Afterwards, I got up, went to school, and I felt peace like there was no care in the world. But all too soon, I went back into the sinful lifestyle of drug addiction. I started at the age of 12. By the time that I am, but the time that I am so thankful for is the times that I heard the words that came from him. A rope was tied around my neck. It was tied to a pipe. I looked around and I was wondering when people see me and they find my body, they will feel sorry for me as I was tired of life at the age of 14. As I got ready to jump off the deck and end my life, I heard the eternal words. There's more to life than what you know. I looked around and saw no one the words diffused me from what I was going to do, so I removed the noose from my neck. Months later, I loaded a gun and began walking to a swamp to shoot myself where no one would find me. And as I walked, the words were heard again. There's more to life than what you know. It diffused me again, and I stopped and looked around. No one. 
I returned and put the gun away. At 15, I was arrested for drugs, and because of a stupid move on my part, the detective had to pull his gun and aim it at my head. And he said, if you move, I'm going to blow your head off. Detention lockup. Told I was going to be sent to a juvenile halfway house in Pensacola, Florida. A juvenile pre-prison. But the judge spoke kindly to me that day and gave me a year in a drug and crisis treatment center in town. Not expelled from school, though I had sold drugs on school grounds. I met David Foster, the one who brought me to the church in art class who I just found out a couple weeks ago when I was down in Panama City for the 75th anniversary that he was afraid of me back then. I don't know why. I was always nice. (laughs) Remember this. If God is working on one, he's working on the other. My first question in the car was to him, How many sins do you have to commit before you go to hell? He ended by asking if I would go to church with him. I said yes. He picked me up that night, and as I went through the old door of the church, I heard that voice again. Nobody is around me. But this time, he said this, you're home. I often think of the goodness of God and how he can speak to a person who doesn't even know him. Remember, I had no home. I was homeless. I was on the, I was on the streets. And remember that, that God even saw me when I was digging through trash. God even saw me when I wore the pajamas. I know who, who started the pajama craze, by the way. <laughs> when I had a pajamas only to wear to school at seventh grade. And yet God saw me there before I ever knew him. Tonight I will speak as if this is my last time speaking to you. Who knows what will happen tomorrow? Who knows if the Lord will come? I want to tell you that God is here to get your attention to the young people and the young in heart. There's only one way from truth, and that is down. And if you so choose to walk away from him, You may have the pleasure in sin for a short period of time, a short season, fulfilling the lust of your flesh, but you will tragically end lost and without God in an eternal flame of torment. If you do not believe me, read Luke chapter 16 when it comes to the rich man and Lazarus. Some people teach that that is a parable. It is not a parable. Jesus never used names in a parable until this one and this is not a parable and the bible says the rich man in hell lifted up his eyes being in torment please understand something it's real the bible teaches us to fear god that we may depart from iniquity there comes a point in time that we need to learn to fear the lord in a good way not ooh. uh, no, fear the Lord that if you, do, if you do not seek his face and you do not walk his way, then you're walking away from him and you need to fear for your soul. I told you that things may be happening that you may not like. We are to be strong, endure to the end for our reward is before us and to run the race with patience and with thankfulness. To endure the circumstances of life and long suffering toward others. We are to show our God calling to this generation of how to live for Jesus Christ's, a Jesus Christ-centered life by showing them how to live in difficulties and pain and even how to rejoice and so doing become part of the great cloud of witnesses that even surround us now. There is a God. There is a devil. There are angels, there are demons, there is a heaven, and there is a hell. There is truth, and there are lies. And then there's you, and there's me, having given every opportunity to overcome 
by the power of God in our lives. We are to fight the good fight of faith, having our loins girt about with truth. How important is truth in our lives? Does anybody have a clue? Now I got to hold my pants up. The Bible says having our loins girt about with truth. Think of that as truth. And it holds everything together. You don't have to be, okay, I'm going to make it this way or I'm going to do this way. You don't have to keep on holding up your pants or your dress. Guys, if you wear dresses, we have her talk. Please understand something. It is so important for you to know truth. We are told by voices within us that we are unworthy, that we are no good. We have no talent to give. But God invites us into his presence because we have a talent to give. But because he wants us to show us, which is from the beginning of time. Come unto me. All you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Did you notice something unto, th unto that? He requests us to come into his presence. You can think of opportunities that are past and that your depression is too deep. But I'd like to give you a quote from Corey Tinboon. There is no pit so deep that God is not yet deeper still. You think you're so far gone. You think there's no more opportunities for you to live for God. You think that there's no more, no more things you can do for him because you feel like you're too far gone. There's more to life than what you know. Because the thing about it is God will reach where you are at to pull you out if you want to, if you want to come out of that pit. Remember, God's presence is everywhere. He is omnipresent, so you have never been alone. The question is, have you recognized him? Are you wanting to recognize that he's in your life, that he's trying to speak to your heart, that he's trying to lead you along the way so that you may become deeper in him? Remember that the most common Hebrew term for presence is panem, which is translated face, implying a close and personal encounter with the Lord. And an example of Panem in the scriptures is Genesis chapter three, when Adam and Eve heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and Eve hid themselves from where? From the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Please understand something, when we seek his face, we are seeking his presence. In Psalms 139, it tells us, whither shall I go from your spirit or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me. O God, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand of the sea. When I wake, I am still with thee. Even in the book of Acts chapter 17, Paul proclaimed on Mars Hill when he said this, verse 27, that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not very far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. This amazing truth is because the Lord God created the entire universe and is so much greater than the heavens and the earth. The universe is but a small drop in the bucket or a tiny white wildflower. You know, God can speak to each and every one of us. He can reveal his presence to us in any manner that he so chooses. He proved this with Moses in the burning bush and Aaron with the, with the budding staff. He proved this with Elijah by revealing himself as the, in many ways, one notably 
as the God who answers by fire. He also proved himself by sending an angel to the Roman centurion Cornelius. And he has shown you that he will meet you where you are at if you want him to. Please do not listen to what I'm just saying as words. There comes a point in time that we must learn to apply it to our lives. When it says, draw near to God, finish it for me, please. And he will draw near unto you. James chapter 4, verse 8. Some people have problems because they are always looking on the negative side of things. It's like driving through Dayton. I had to learn some things this past couple months because I have to drive through Dayton every day in both the morning and night rush hour. There are some people that should never have a license. <laughs> Preach it, right? Preach it. So I'm driving my car and I'm driving along and I have a bad habit of looking in the mirror and this guy, I can't see his headlights. And I want to put the brake on. I want to make sure that he knows what I'm trying to say and I have to stop. I can't do that. And I was making me have an attitude. How many has attitudes around here? Good, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Wow, I need my belt back on. <laughs> my wife probably is shaking her head at me, right? <laughs> I love you, darling. But the point of it is, is she used to tell me, stop looking in the mirror. And you know what I've had to learn? I had to stop looking at my failures. I had to stop looking at my own issues, my own faults, what other people have done for me, against me, to me. And you know something? All of a sudden, something changes. All of a sudden, he's taught me a lesson of thankfulness. It was on your worst day that God proved himself to be faithful. So I want to tell you today, choose to be thankful in all things. Give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. And when we withhold our thanks from God, we show ourselves arrogant. Thank him for the good times. Thank him for the bad times. Thank him for the struggles. Thank him for the victories. Thank you for the health. Thank you for the sickness. In all things, give thanks. You want to know what the will of God is? That is the will of God for you to do. That is the known will of God for you to do. Give thanks. Okay, I got a little more longer to go. We must be willing to give God this space to move in this place. I'm going to say it one more time. I need to be willing to give God this space to move in this place. Please let me share with you the principles of how to live for God successfully. Do I have all the answers? Absolutely not. But I do want to let you know that what I have learned along life's way and pathway, there's more to life than what you know. God has been faithful in answering that, that, that verbiage, that word to me. I'm passing the baton to you tonight as my father in the gospel, Pastor O.C. Crabtree, passed on to me going on 50 years. I'm not really that old, but just want to let you know it's been 50 years Almost, I'm going on my jubilee. This is the week, this is the week that I got the Holy Ghost on a Bible study night in my pew. 
I didn't know what speaking in tongues was. It just happened as I worshiped him. A principle is a fundamental truth that serves as the foundation for a system of belief or even behaviors. It is a general or basic truth on which other truths are built upon. You're getting a little bit of Bible study tonight. There's three things that I would like you to take away from here, young people, young at heart. Three things. And if you put them to, if you put them to work in your life, you'll see your life changed. And there's, more to, there's more to life than what you know. That God will reveal to us the things. He'll take us to places we've never been, cause us to see things we've never seen, cause us to hear things we've never heard before. But you got to put it to work in your life. The first one, if you're taking notes or if you have a photographic memory, hopefully that you won't go out of here, what did he preach about? He just rambled along. No, tonight is Matthew chapter 6, 33. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these shall be added unto you. I got a question to ask you. What is the kingdom? You can guess. What is the kingdom? The kingdom of God is the reign of Jesus Christ, the realm where Jesus' authority is acknowledged and obeyed. So my question for you, seek you first the kingdom. How do you seek the kingdom? Anybody have an idea? To seek God's kingdom is to desire Jesus' rule to be recognized and obeyed in three realms. My favorite number, three. First of all, first realm. I want to recognize Jesus Christ and obey him within my own life. I want to learn how to pray. I want to look, how to look into the mirror daily of God's word. I want to begin to do right living based on his word. Within my own life, God, how do you want me to live for you? I will obey. I will walk with you because I know there's more to life than what I know. Number two, in our circle of immediate influence, my brothers, my sisters, my family, how we touch each other's lives, live for God, encourage one another, walk with one another and fight the good fight of faith. Number three, as far around the world as we can reach, begin to give to missions, begin to pray for missions, begin to say, God, whatever your will is, whatever your kingdom is, I am willing to do whatever you want me to do. That's number one. Seek you first the kingdom of God. You put that to work, to work in your lives, young men, young ladies, young at heart, every one of us, all of a sudden your life is going to change. Number two, Psalms 119. You cannot be saved without the word. You cannot be saved without the word. So how important is the, is the word of God? Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We know that you can't be saved without faith. Is that correct? So we begin to learn how to walk with him in his word. By when we read, this, when we read the scripture where it says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which ministers grace to the hearers, all of a sudden, oh, my corrupt verbiage, my vulgarity, my negativity, all of a sudden, because... Remember, fresh and salt water doesn't come out of the same well. Psalms 119, one of my favorite verses, 9 through 12. It says it this way. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way, but by taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And then he also says, blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Even Jesus said it this way. The words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. 
So here we are. Here we are. What do we do? You're going through a struggle. You're going through some pain. Well, a marvelous thing happens when we allow the word to have authority in our lives, to trust it and to live it. When's the last time you picked up your Bible? When's the last time that you took out a little index card and began to write a, one scripture and memorize it? When was the last time that you applied something that you've been going struggling through and then instead of talking to somebody else, go to his word and look it up into concordance and find out where the answer is? When was the last time? I don't mean that you can't, you can't talk to people, but the word of God has the authority in our lives if we allow it to happen. Even the scripture teaches us this in Deuteronomy, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them for the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor will he forsake you. Isn't that something? He already tells us that he won't forsake us. Then how come we think sometimes that we're alone? How come? How come you don't get up in the morning and say, good morning, Lord? How come you don't say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for the day as you lay your head down? How come as you're driving along that you don't put your arm out, not out of that window, but just put your arm out and just begin to praise him with your eyes open, especially in Dayton? How come? When a former school teacher on vacation in North Carolina saw a brown bear climbing on the porch, on the back deck of her condominium, she used her teacher's voice. How many of you remember the teacher's voice? I remember Mr. Bush, Mr. Miss Carey. I remember Mr. McIntyre, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Prevo, Coach Hooper. Oh, those are the ones that gave me corporal punishment. Back then they had corporal punishment. I remember their voice. To tell this bear to leave. Through the back door, she said, what do you think you're doing on my porch? You get down, go, go, how dare you? Her teacher voice conveyed authority and the bear began scampering off the balcony and down in the railing as if it was being afraid of being sent to the principal's office. Whenever worries and fears and anxieties and problems invade our hearts, we must learn to use the voice of authority of God's word, the scripture. We have to say to our feelings, what do you think you're doing on my porch? Negative. I don't mind tears. I don't mind to where you feel down. But there comes a point on where you learn to, learn to look and when, listen to what Jesus said. Lift up your head for your redemption draws nigh. Comes a point in time to where you begin to believe that. Comes a point in time to every word that he speaks, it speaks life to you. You may be down, but go to his word, go to him, and all of a sudden things will begin to change. Maybe not right at that moment, but all of a sudden, something begins to turn into you. Whatever we say, we have to say to our feelings, we must quote verses to ourselves to preach to ourselves at times, to pray his word into your life. I want to I challenge everyone here. I want to challenge you on two things. I may find a third thing. Because three is my favorite number. First one, I want you to memorize one verse May it be a favorite verse, but memorize one verse by Sunday. One verse. Is that hard? Some of you already know how to play games. Some of you already memorize one verse. The, th the second thing is, is next time you go to prayer, take your Bible with you and begin to pray the scriptures. Lord, Cleanse my heart. I want to be more like you and less like me. You have come into my life to make something beautiful. And I want to learn to long for you as in a dry and thirsty land. My soul longs for you. I don't want to be the same as I was when I came into here. 
Oh, I want my life to change. You said to have faith in God. Therefore, Lord God, I'm going to have faith in you. You told me to trust in the Lord with all my heart. And don't lean to your own understanding. But I want to acknowledge you. That you may direct my paths. All of a sudden, something changes. Something changes. I'm done. I want to tell you the third thing. The third thing is he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Psalms 104, 34, there's many scriptures. It says, my meditation of him shall be sweet and I will be glad in the Lord. Folks, it will be worth it all. Fight the good fight. And I bring you back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for him. The second meaning is, the first meaning was on this earth as you walk with God. The second part of this verse, meaning, it extends to the beauty and to the happiness of God's eternal kingdom of glory. One day, we have a final home. Don't lose sight of it. Keep your eyes focused. Go forward. Put your hand to the plow and go forward. Don't look back. Oh, don't reach. Because there's nothing in the world except pain and heartache. But as you walk with God, all of a sudden, everything, he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. I thank you, God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I can't earn anything from you, Lord God, but you have given me your grace. You've shown love like no other. I love you today, Lord, but help me to love you more tomorrow. My soul longs for you. <laughs> the final home of the redeemed. Man has lived in sin and knows by experience the consequences of the rebellion of pain, suffering and death that has inflicted upon mankind. We have never experienced what life would be like without sin. Therefore, living in heaven will be an entirely new and glorious experience for us. And I'm going to finish it even though they don't have it up here. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Revelation chapter 21. It's there. Conditions as we know today will pass away. And in God's new kingdom, there will be nothing that, we have, that will have a mark of the curse of sin upon it. If you would please stand. I have nothing to give but myself. I love you all. I love my pastor and his pastor's wife.
there has to come a point in time to where we would give our lives one for another. And that's where we want to do, get to that place. No greater love than this is that a man give his life for another. No longer is it selfishness. No longer is it just me, myself, and I. But now God lives through you because that's what you've been praying for. God lived through me. Yeah, he wants to. You say, I, I'm nobody. Welcome to my world. How's it feel? All of a sudden, things change. I can never, we can never, as a ministerial team or others, we can never tell you how much God loves you enough. The question is, will you love him back? I'm not a pump and primer. If a person wants to pray, they will. If you want to pray, this altar is open for you to rededicate your life, to say, here am I, Lord, send me. Have you ever prayed that prayer before? Here am I, Lord, send me. Change me that I will be more like you and less like me. You know everything about me. You've got to feel the love of God tonight, how much he really loves you and cares for you. I give you, Lord God, myself. I don't have anything else to give but myself. And therefore, Lord God, you have found me worthy to come and die for me. That still blows me away. How could you love me and die for me? But you did. Oh, that's right. That's right. Just draw near to him tonight and you're going to find a change in your life. Just draw near to him. Just talk to him as, God, you know what's going on in my life. You know every thought, every, every feeling because he knows our thoughts and the intents of our hearts. That he does. Oh, mighty Jesus, I come to you as you forgive us, as you help us. We pray for one another. We pray for each and every one. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this. Never give up. Hold tight. Be strong. Because there's more to life than what you know. When you're on your deepest down, know that God's going to meet you. There's more to life than what you know. That's right. Oh, this is a new change. This is a change in you tonight. This is a beginning. This is a continuing. Everything, oh Lord Jesus. 
everything. That's right. This is a change, a change point in your life. You know everything about me, Lord. says that a broken and contrite heart he will not despise he won't despise a broken and contrite heart oh mighty Jesus oh mighty Jesus thank you so much I love you Lord Jesus Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As we end in prayer tonight, I just want to just share one more thing. I have a wonderful treasure the gift of God without measure. And so we'll travel together, my Bible and I. Love it. Live it. May the good Lord keep you safe. May he put his hand upon you. May he direct your steps that everything we go through, that you will feel his presence of strength, of courage, and of acknowledgement. We thank you for this, for your faithfulness, Lord, in Jesus' name. God bless you, in Jesus' name.